Hollywood guest list for a gala party being turned on by 20th Century Fox is starting to read like a who's who of the film industry. It's all because the Queen is the guest of honour and just about everybody would like an invitation. The dinner is part of a packed agenda for the Queen's 10-day visit to California. The Queen's San Diego visit ended this morning with attendance at church. Her first day had been a big success with slight criticism from some fashionably observant Californians about her choice of a blue and white polka dot dress that looked, they said, just a bit ordinary. But a brief appearance railside on the Royal Yacht Britannia, taking an honor guard salute, put any criticisms to rest. Resplendent in diamond tiara, stole and white gown, the magic of monarchy was there last night. And there will certainly be some of that magic tonight here at the 20th Century Fox Movie Studios when the untitled royalty of Hollywood performs for the British monarch. Some of the Queen's favorites will appear, Perry Como, Frank Sinatra, and George Burns, and they've spent several days getting Soundstage 9 ready, giving the Queen, who is an ardent movie buff, a chance to see Hollywood firsthand. With some of the film world's biggest stars in the audience, these invitations have become the most sought after in town. Well, I understand that incredibly big names are, are making frantic phone calls to Fox for invitations. And there is, people are, big, big stars are, are hustling for tickets. It ought to be one of the biggest events of the tour. On the second day of her visit to the United States, the Queen has been meeting the royalty of Hollywood at a gala dinner party. The dinner, hosted by First Lady Nancy Reagan, was held in Los Angeles on a luxuriously decorated film set. This satellite report from Barry Matheson. The Queen and Prince Philip began their first full day in the United States with church services in San Diego. Then the Queen, in a two-piece lilac suit and pearls, was given an appropriate send-off, a Highland fling. Later, a presidential jet, courtesy of Ronald Reagan, flew the royals to the desert resort of Palm Springs. There, behind closed and guarded gates, lunch with Walter Annenberg, a former U.S. ambassador to Great Britain. But the highlight of Her Majesty's visit here came tonight, when British royalty met Hollywood royalty. The occasion, a lavish, star-studded dinner at the 20th Century Fox Studios, hosted by First Lady Nancy Reagan. Ever since Hollywood found out the Queen was coming to town, there was a scramble to get on the invite list for tonight's royal performance. Anybody who's anybody in the world's movie capital showed up. The rich, the beautiful, the famous walked down a red carpet to Studio Number 9, where MASH was filmed for so many years. Wouldn't have missed it for anything. Well, hi, George. Is this your first meeting with the Queen? I met the whole family except the Queen. I met her mother, her grandmother, her great-grandmother, I met them all. It was a paparazzi field day. But then there was momentary quiet. A helicopter was used as part of a last-minute final security sweep. Nancy Reagan arrived just moments before the royal party. When the Queen's motorcade pulled up, Mrs. Reagan stepped forward to escort Her Majesty to the gala dinner and entertainment inside. Our love is stronger than the universe. Dionne Warwick joined Perry Como and George Burns, among other performers, in a show produced by Frank Sinatra that lasted over an hour. We're sitting on top of the world. Just rolling along. Just singing a song. The Queen, who seemed to thoroughly enjoy the evening, goes on from this glittering all-star night to an extremely fast-paced schedule of appearances here tomorrow. Barry Matheson, National 9 News, Los Angeles. In a night of glamour and glitter, the Queen has taken Hollywood by storm. With a guest list and entertainment lineup reading like a who's who of show business, the party put on for the Queen in a 20th Century Fox soundstage couldn't help but be a hit. But when the Queen made her entrance in the light of a thousand flashbulbs, there was no mistaking the real star attraction. Even Hollywood was starstruck. So many famous faces under one roof, not for an awards ceremony, but for a chance to meet the Queen. 500 people were invited, the guest list went through five or six drafts, and to be left off was a social calamity. In the setting of a dream factory, the 20th Century Fox Studios, British royalty met Hollywood royalty, and the British community, always strong in Hollywood, was well represented. The Queen and Duke were met at the door by Mrs. Nancy Reagan, standing in for the President, and according to someone close to her, she was distinctly nervous before the event. It was the first time that she had presided by herself over a state occasion of this kind, 
the first time really that there had been a state occasion of this kind. The setting was the lantern-lit number nine sound studio at 20th century. The master of ceremonies, Hollywood television personality Ed McMahon, the guest of honor, of course, the Queen, and the first act, Dionne Warwick. Why do you have to be a heartbreaker? The average age of the entertainers, Miss Warwick apart, was over 70. The comic had been warming up for 64 years. And they're talking about making a movie of my life. Hope they do it fast so I can see it. The final act was another legend. I get no kick from champagne. Mere alcohol, it doesn't move me at all. <laughs> Tell me why should it be true that I get a, a kick out of you? Mr. Sinatra and fellow veteran Perry Como delighted the royal audience. By some mystery of protocol, the Queen's likes and dislikes in popular music are not supposed to be known. But there was no disguising her appreciation last night.